All right, hello, greetings. Uh, let's take a look at problem three. Uh, so problem three, we're told to use the steam tables to do the following. A, a drum 3.5 meters cubed in volume contains steam at one bar and 210 degrees C. Determine the mass of steam in the drum. Okay, so we're given the total volume along with the pressure and temperature and asked to solve for uh, mass. Uh, so the first thing I think of is, um, well, if I can determine the specific volume, which is the volume per unit mass, and I know the total volume, uh, then I can use that to solve for mass. All right. So using the pressure and temperature, what I want to try and do first is determine then the specific volume um, of my of steam at those conditions. So in A we have that we have a pressure of one bar okay, and temperature is 210 degrees C. Okay. So remember if I have a single component system in two phase coexistence, so say vapor liquid equilibrium, I need just a single degree of freedom. If I have a single component system in a single phase system, I have two degrees of freedom. Uh, so we know temperature and pressure and so that would be enough to pin down uh, the state of my system. Okay, so what I'm going to go and do is I'm going to go, let's see, when we looked at our superheated steam tables, those are in increments of pressure, um, but we could do the same thing with temperature. Um, basically, I want to find T sat at one bar, or I want to find P sat at 210 degrees C, uh, whichever is, is most convenient. Um, so let's see if 210 happens to be on the saturated steam tables, and, and it is, so we can go with, with this. So at 210 degrees C, P sat is 19.07 bars. Okay, so P sat at the temperature of 210 degrees C is equal to 19.07 bars. Okay, so we find that P is less than P sat, therefore, we must be uh, in a vapor phase, right? Superheated vapor, um, vapor, um, whatever you want to refer to it, right? So we must be uh, in a vapor phase. Okay, cool. So it's going to be a superheated vapor. So that means I need to go to superheated steam tables. Okay, and so now I'm looking for pressure of one bars. Okay, pressure of one bars here. First row is volume. And now I'm looking for 210 degrees C. Okay, so unfortunately, 210 degrees C uh, doesn't fall uh, nicely. Um, I don't. I don't have 210 degrees C. I know it's going to be somewhere between uh, 200 and, and 250 here. All right. So um, what you'll need to do is you'll need to um, interpolate. Okay. So um, so from your superheated steam tables, we would um, interpolate. to get V, my specific volume, at 210 degrees C and one bar. Okay, and so that's from the superheated steam tables. And then the idea is, I know that, oh, let me close this. So I know that V, okay, V has units of uh, volume per mass. Okay, we're provided with V total. Okay, which has units of volume. Okay, so if I want to get mass, then what I want is V total. So mass then will be V total divided by that specific volume, right? And I can use that to determine mass. Okay, cool. All right, so that's A. So it's just a matter of we determined the phase of our system. We found it was a superheated vapor. So then we can go to the superheated steam tables with that temperature and pressure, uh, find the specific volume. Knowing the total volume, we could then use that to compute mass. Okay, great. B. Uh, so B, we're told we have wet steam with a quality of 15% vapor that's to be stored under pressure at 20 bar in a thermally insulated vessel. What is the temperature? Okay. So first question is, if I have uh, steam with a quality of 15%, uh, that means 
fifteen uh, percent by mass of my system is is in the vapor phase. Okay, well that must mean that the other eighty five percent is liquid. So it must be then that I have two phase coexistence in which I have a liquid in equilibrium with the vapor. If I have a single component two phase system, I have just a single degree of freedom. So that means that pressure right is enough to pin down the state of my system. So when we're asked for the temperature, and I know that I have you know, a two-phase system at vapor-liquid coexistence, I can just go to the um, steam tables, the saturated steam tables, uh, find a pressure of 20 bars, and use that to determine the temperature. Okay, so I know I'm going to be two-phase, and so pressure alone is enough to pin down, oh, pressure alone is enough to pin down the state of my system. Okay, so um, we could use, let's see, we're given a pressure of uh, 20 bars, okay? So we could use a superheated steam table. So, um, to, you know, it's a, a little reminder, okay? So the first table is saturated steam tables. So this corresponds to water two-phase coexistence. And then, you know, what's unique is it's sorted by temperature, right? So it's designed such that, say, you specify a temperature in a given increment or, um, yeah, okay, so how are these tables tabulated? So, if, as I said, if we have a uh, single component system at two-phase coexistence, I have just a single degree of freedom. So I specify one, um, you know, intensive thermodynamic property, and all others are fixed. So the way this is arranged is such that you're essentially specifying T. Okay, you're specifying T, and then you can imagine measuring everything else. In the superheated steam tables, you have two degrees of freedom. Right, so in theory, then um, so you need, in order to pin down the state of your system, you need to specify two intensive thermodynamic properties. Our favorite two, all right, are going to be temperature and pressure because they're you know physical quantities we we know and understand. So when I want to um, you know determine the properties of saturated steam or of superheated steam, all right, I specify pressure and temperature. Okay, it's set up though so that. You know, for a given pressure, so as since the um, saturated steam tables were, um, you know, sorted by temperature, um, here for a given pressure, they will give you the properties at uh, two phase coexistence. And so, oh, I'm trying to look back because I'm forgetting everything now. So 20 bars. Okay, so this table might be easier since it's arranged by uh, pressure. Okay, so. I find that uh, for pressure of 20 bars, T sats 212.38. Okay, so for B, I'd get the T is that 212.38 degrees C. Okay, cool. So hopefully that makes sense. It's a two phase system, uh, so I know I have a saturated um, VLE mixture. Uh, so pressure is enough to pin down the state of my system. Okay, now three. If the total mass to be stored is 525 kilograms, what is the required volume of the vessel for the system in B? Okay, all right, so B, um, let's see here. So it, it's kind of a, a mashup of, of A and then thinking back to um, uh, problem two. So now we're told mass, and we want to know what the total volume is. So if we're given mass, and we need to know what the total volume of the vessel is, then I need to find the specific volume of the vessel. Right? Key would be if I can find the specific volume of, of the vessel, um, and I know the total mass, I can use that to determine the total volume. Okay. Now the extra wrinkle we have here, as compared to A, is I have a two-phase mixture. Okay. So. If I think about a two-phase mixture, so you know, picture a closed system. Okay, so I have a closed system in which I have a vapor in equilibrium with the liquid. The molar volume of that vapor is going to be different than the molar volume of the liquid. All right, molar volume of my vapor will be greater than the molar volume of your liquid. Okay, molar volume is nothing more than volume per, um, in this case, specific volume, volume per mass. So I could determine uh, the specific volume of that vapor. Okay, which would be you know, the volume of that vapor phase divided by the mass of the vapor phase. And I could do the same thing for the liquid phase. I could also compute a specific volume for my system. So that would be the volume of my total system divided by the total mass um, within it. Okay, um, And if you were to look back at, at problem two, um, 
we came up with a, a series of conservation equations um, when we had to um, deal with systems at two-phase coexistence. Okay, and so namely one, right? We said uh, conservation of mass, right? We said that the total mass of our system has to be equal to the mass of my vapor phase plus the mass of my liquid phase. Okay. All right. The other thing we came up with is a conservation essentially of volume. Okay. So I know that the total volume of my vapor phase would be the specific volume of the vapor times the mass of my vapor. Specific volume of my, or the volume occupied by my liquid would be the specific volume of my liquid times the mass of my liquid. And then the volume occupied by vapor plus the volume occupied by liquid must be equal to the volume of my vessel. Okay, so it must be that MV, specific, for V here is the specific volume of my system, is equal to MV times VV plus ML times VL. Okay, now we need to look at what we know. Okay, so from B, we said we had to submit two phase coexistence. Okay, so you could easily go over here, and so at 20 bars, here's TSAT, and I could read off the molar volume of my liquid and vapor. Okay, so I know if I look at this system of two equations, I know that I know VL and VV, right? I can look those up. What else do I know? Well, in the problem statement, we're given um, the total mass. The total mass is 525 grams. Okay. So the total mass we know, mass is 525 grams. Okay. So I know mass. Okay. So as it's written now, I have a system of two equations. Okay. One, two, with three unknowns. One, two, three. Right. Mass of vapor, mass of liquid, uh, and total specific volume. Okay. So do I know anything else? Well, yes. Okay. So in B, we're told that the quality of our system is 15% vapor. Okay. So what quality means, so quality of 15% vapor just means 15% of my system by mass is, is vapor. Okay. And so we're told that Q, okay, all right, QV, all right, quality of um, the percentage vapor, would be equal to mv divided by m, which is equal to 0 0.15. Okay, um, or if you want to rewrite it, mv is equal to 0 0.15 times m, where we know that m, you know, is 525 kilograms. So I know mv. Okay, so with that, then this reduces to you know system of two equations with two unknowns. Okay, so I can solve. Okay, so I can take this, and I can solve for, okay, what's the only, well, the one that's, you know, essentially important to, to solve for is V, uh, the specific volume of my system, but then I'll also get ML. And actually, I take that back, right, because, well, yeah, so you can solve for ML, but ML you can also just get from directly solving this equation, right? Um, and you're going to find that ML is 0 0.85 times M, right? So you get that. And then essentially what I've done here is I've just solved this equation on its own, right? Or you could think about solving the two of them simultaneously, okay? Regardless, right, the big one you're going to solve for is, is V, okay? Because then once I know V, if I want to know V total, okay, V total is just going to be the total mass, which we're given times the specific volume of my system, V, okay? And that's it, you know, you've got it, you know, and if you wanted to, you could also take this equation and you could just lump MV together and make it V total. Um, it would be exactly the same, okay? But that is uh, problem three.